visiting us through the eyes of Isaiah, and we will continue today. This is a, a pretty long chapter. I want to read the whole chapter this morning. You can go with Miss Stacy. So, uh, we'll read the whole chapter from Isaiah chapter 60 this morning. I want you to listen very, very carefully. Listen very carefully as we uh, read this together today. It says in verse 1, Arise! Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and His glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all are gathered together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar, your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you and the wealth of nations shall come to you. And a multitude of camels shall cover you and the young camels of Midian and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come and they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news to praises of our Lord. All the flocks of Keter shall be gathered to you. The rams of Naboth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will beautify my beautiful house. Who are the, these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? For the coastland shall hope for me. The ships of Tarshish first, the, to bring your children from afar, to their silver and gold with them. For the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because He has made you beautiful. Foreigners shall build up your walls and their king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually day and night. They shall not be shut, that people may bring to you the wealth of nations with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come upon you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you shall come bending low to you. And all those who despise you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations. You shall nurse at the breast of kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold. Instead of iron, I will bring you silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will make you over your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more. Your light by day. For nor the brightness shall the moon give you light, but the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. You people, uh, your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least one shall be a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will hasten. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but when I, I was growing up, my mother was my alarm clock. And you know what I'm talking about? And uh, it'd be those mornings when I have to get up early to go to school or get up early to go help daddy with something that mama would come into the bedroom and she would turn the light on. 
and uh, she'd pull back the covers and shake me a little bit and say it's time to get up and a lot of times she would say okay rise and shine rise and shine there's a lot of times where I wanted to just crawl back into bed or pull the covers back over my head but she was saying hey it's time to get up and it's time to go do some good that phrase rise and shine comes from Isaiah 60. It comes from Isaiah 60 where God at one point in the history of this world when Christ comes again God will say to his people as he said to his son Jesus on the third day he will say rise and shine. He will say to the dead in Christ rise and shine. Uh, when that day comes. It's a new day to do good. That's the meaning of that phrase. It's a new day to get out in this world and to do some good. And this vision that Isaiah 60 gives us is a beautiful vision that, that is so important for so much of the New Testament. So much of the New Testament. Listen, listen to Revelation 21. I, uh, Isaiah's vision here, John picks up in Revelation 21. And he's talking about the new Jerusalem, this new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven to earth. And he says in verse 22, And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of the Lord gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light, Will the nations walk and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day. And there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are lit written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the same vision that Isaiah chapter 60 has given us. This vision of this new heaven and new earth. This vision of the new Jerusalem and the, the people of God raised from the dead. The people of God glorified. And now the nations coming to them. And the wealth of nations coming to them. One day when God comes again, when Jesus comes again, he will tell us, those who are asleep, sleeping the sleep of death, He will tell us to rise and shine, but He will come and tell us that even before that. He will tell us to rise and shine. It's a new day. It's a new time. And eventually it will be a new time where there is no more time. It will be an eternal dawn with no more night time but it will be a time of perfect rest. And it tells us here in Isaiah 60, nations and kings will come to that city on the hill and they'll bring the wealth of nations that will flow into Jerusalem, the, headquarter for, the headquarters for this kingdom of God on earth. And it tells us that gates will always be open. And the reason is because there will no longer be any more threat there will no longer be any more danger. The gates can always remain open because there will be a peace that we can't even comprehend at this point. Isaiah 60 tells us that the nations will be, bring gold and they will bring frankincense. Now that rings a bell when we get to the story of Christmas, doesn't it? We know that there were wise men, magi, uh, another way to say magi would just be say magicians uh, but not in the same kind of sense that we think of magicians today but these uh, wise people who were uh, learned in the, the arts and learned in philosophy and astrology and astronomy they were pagans they weren't uh, Jewish believers but they were uh, of the Gentiles of the nations and uh, the Bible tells us that these wise men traveled from the east uh, because God did something miraculous to get their attention, right? God did something incredible to get their attention. They saw the star of the Messiah in the sky. And I know we, people try to figure out what this was. It was a comet or was it a planet and the conjunction of different planets and 
was it you know a, co a couple of different astronomical events coming together at just the right time? Uh, I believe it probably was just an angel just displaying himself as a star to get their attention and to, to get them to come. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, it was so bright and it was so brilliant that they knew they had to travel at least 600 to 800, maybe 900 miles to go see this one who was born King of the Jews. In Matthew chapter 2, what we have is a partial fulfillment of these promises that we find in Isaiah chapter 60. What Matthew is telling us by telling us the story of the wise men coming is that this king that they were coming to see, this baby king that they were coming to see is the one who was going to bring all of what Isaiah 60 had promised to pass. Make no mistake about it. And the wise men, they came and they came bringing three gifts, right? Now from that we have, you know, in our uh, tr traditions, uh, we have just decided that they, they brought three gifts, so there's probably only three wise men. Uh, but more than likely, there were a lot more. More than likely, there was a large carry. It could have been 30 to maybe 300 people. We don't know. Uh, we bring, they brought three gifts, but it doesn't tell us how many people there actually were. But we know what they brought, right? They brought gold. They brought frankincense. And they also brought something that Isaiah didn't mention at all. Isaiah mentions, Isaiah 60 mentions gold and frankincense. But Matthew tells us they also brought myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold uh, represents the presence of God in the Holy of Holies in the temple, in the most holy place of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was and where the presence of God will fully dwell. It, the whole room was completely overlaid. It was a gold room. Just imagine sitting in this sanctuary today and everything in here was overlaid with gold. The gold represented the presence of God. And, and Matthew, of course, along with Isaiah, uh, evoking Isaiah, Matthew is uh, quick to make us uh, aware that Jesus was Emmanuel, which means God with us. The gold also represents royalty, that this one born was a king, and not just any king, he was the king of kings. The frankincense that they brought was an incense that was used all over the ancient world in the worship of a deity. It was also used in the temple on the altar when sacrifices were being made. So what the gold tells us is that Jesus is the presence of God and the King of Kings. The frankincense recognizes that this little baby boy wasn't just an ordinary human. This little baby boy was God in the flesh. They came and they worshipped Him. Matthew chapter 2 tells us. The wise men bowed down and worshipped Him. And this should not really surprise us, although it is a, it is a surprise, but Isaiah and other prophets had said that God himself was going to come. Isaiah uh, 35, that God is going to come and he himself is going to shepherd his people. Ezekiel chapter 34, God said, I myself, I am going to come and I am going to shepherd my people. So this one that they came to see in the manger was God in the flesh. The eternal word made flesh. But they also brought myrrh. Isaiah 60 doesn't mention myrrh. Why do they bring myrrh? Now, the wise men coming to the baby Jesus, and by the way, in our traditions too, we also kind of just lump everything together. Uh, the wise men actually came quite a long time after Jesus was born. Long after he would have been in the stable. Or the cave that was used as a stable. It's called a grotto. He was actually, the Matthew 2 tells us that they came, the wise men came to a house. And Jesus was probably about a year to two years old when they got there. So just keep that in mind. But they came bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why myrrh? Well, myrrh is a fragrant spice and it was a key ingredient not only in the preparation for sacrifices in the temple, 
in the temple of the Jews. It was a key ingredient in preparation of the sacrifices. It was also a key ingredient in the ointment that they would put on dead bodies. Now this, to the Jews at the time, would have been a surprise. As we talked about last week, they didn't expect the Messiah to come to be one who would die. They knew that he would be one who would reign, but they did not know that he would be crowned with a crown of thorns on a Roman cross. But here, even in Matthew 2, and even with the providence of God working in these magi traveling from so far away from these other nations, we're reminded that this is a king who was not only born to reign, this is a king who was born to die as a sacrifice for the sins of his people. We shouldn't be surprised. Isaiah told us that as well. In Isaiah chapter 53, talking about the servant who would be the servant to Israel, who would lead the people of Israel back to God, he would give his life as an atoning sacrifice for the sins, not only of the people of God, but of the whole world. That his sacrifice in Isaiah 53, through his sacrifice, he would make many righteous. He would make many righteous. And he would prolong his days even. You have a reference there to a resurrection. So the wise men came to the light well ahead of time, well ahead of the time of the full fulfillment of what Isaiah 60 is talking about as a partial fulfillment, as a way of God saying, this is the one, this baby, this is the one who is going to bring in all that Isaiah and all the other prophets and all of the other promises of God. This is the one who was going to do it. So the wise men came to the light. They followed the light. Now the light in the sky, whatever it was, that light was really there not to bring attention just to itself, was it? That light was there to bring attention to who? To Jesus, who was the real and the true eternal light lying in a manger in the house, being nursed on Mary's knee as the wise men came to him. He was the true light of the world. And we too, we have, like the wise men, if we have faith in Christ, if we have come to believe in Jesus Christ, we have followed the light. We have followed the light of God and we have come to Jesus. Someone or something God has used to point us to Jesus. Now the good news, the cool thing is here is that we now can become the light to help point others to Jesus. That's what God wants of us. God wants us to be the light to point others to Him. We can come to the light and participate in the light and we can begin to shine. The Bible talks about all over the place how the people of God will shine in a dark world. Philippians chapter 2 talks about shining as lights in a dark and perverse world. That we shine as lights. Ephesians 5 talks about living a godly and a righteous and a moral life and living in the light so that we can shine, so that others can see God. There's so many different ways that we can shine. I love the, the Christmas program the kids did. I mean, I was so inspired by it. Uh, because there was just so many things that came to mind as they were doing their performance on Monday night. Uh, but Lisa did a wonderful job. Let's give Lisa a little bit. We are working But it was such a beautiful message, and that they were all stars, and the, mostly all stars. And they they were all said, you know, one of the songs was "It's time to shine," right? It's time to shine. Why? To bring attention to themselves. No, the, the message of their program was that the key to being a real star is being humble to bring attention to Jesus. It's time to shine. Daniel 12 talks about how the righteous will shine as stars. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. That the righteous will shine as stars. Here Jesus puts it this way. Listen to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. This is what God's calling us to do, to be. 
In chapter four, chapter five, verse fourteen, he says, "And you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house." In the same way, Jesus said, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. It's time to shine, church. It's time to shine. God is saying to us, even before the resurrection, God says to us, Rise and shine. When we rise from the waters of baptism, baptism, baptism representing our death and burial and our resurrection to new life and new birth, God says to us, rise and shine. Rise and shine. So that Jesus says, so they will see your good works. He did say so that they will hear your good words. He says so that they will see your good works. Now, our good words would be included in the good works, but it's not just about good words. It's about good works. And in the day and time in which we live in the state of the church that we're in today, it, it's in America, we kind of want to interpret that to just kind of be nice in a sort of a vague, in a general sense. But what he's talking about is living a godly and a holy and a righteous life. Getting more and more shine on us. By the way we live, by the way we speak, by how we do what we do, by the way we love each other, truly love each other in the church and caring for one another, helping one another, but also in helping each other and encouraging each other to grow in holiness and righteousness so that we can shine as those lights that God calls us to be. So that beautiful star of Bethlehem, that beautiful star of Bethlehem, you know, what I'm seeing in this story is that God wants us to be like that star. He wants us to shine so that others can come and find Jesus. God's call for us today is rise and shine and point people to Jesus. By the way, we live our lives the way we live our life, not just by through, through our clever arguments and not just through uh, talking about our faith, but through the way we live our faith. We can shine as the light and bring others to Christ ahead of time. Before God will come again and say to us all, those who are dead in Christ, rise and shine. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that we can, through the birth and the life, through the teaching and the ministry, through the death and resurrection and ascension of our Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that we can be his lights in this world, to shine, to point others to Jesus. Lord, help us to live into your call. Help us to, to seek after all of those good things that you want us to have. And Lord, help us to shine so that others may glorify your name and find Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.